looked at Econic as representing the ideas of an ecological premise and then interpreting that into a building that had a presence, the presence of an icon. I think what was um, most beneficial for us was to be able to work through physical modeling. Mm -hmm. And uh, the number of iterations we went through, we would just uh, abstract an idea, a like filter or a porosity, and then, you know, begin to play with different materials and then uh, in an abstract way begin to formalize what that meant. points of connection for arrival as well. We actually, when we went there for the second time, took the metro or the subway, the system, and found that it was pretty easy to access, but also there's a bus stop coming from the north side, um, entering the site as well. So immediately, I think Yasmin and I saw opportunity to actually um, revitalize this neighborhood with an iconic building. of rainwater collection, it really came down to this roof that covered the entire site and collecting as much rainwater as possible both on the roof but also on the ground. The stormwater runoff uh, being channeled in through the building and then filtered through it. So it was really about collecting the water um, from the site, from the surrounding site and also from the roof of the building itself. We could use the concept of the living machine to actually clean and purify water in a natural way that wasn't harmful to the environment. Uh, so on the ground plane, we've incorporated that idea of the living machine through the channels. And as we said before, the neighborhood that we that the site is located in it is um, filled with vacant buildings and buildings and buildings that are. Um, not being optimized, so we saw that as an opportunity to provide an incentive for developers to then begin to, to redevelop the neighborhood based on uh, being able to provide um, water to the, to the buildings within the neighborhood. One of the uh, nine images that we looked at was the cavernous weathering image. And uh, what really struck us about that image from the beginning is that it was a, the natural element of, of water that began to carve out and create space. And we really wanted to create that dynamic in the building. And then we began to catalog water. Um, right. right, that went through those filters. And we made a catalog of images, but also videos, and started to document you know, how water flows through those spaces. and what that could mean to our building, could that mean anything? And I think we did realize that it could, and looking at, like you mentioned before, cavernous weather, and also the sort of inspiration, um, that spaces, architectural spaces, also can be defined by water. Maybe as an idea of collection or circulation, an idea of filtration and space Forming, um, and we kind of found that this configuration meant something to us. Maybe that there's this idea of collection and then filtration, and by combining or hybridizing these two, it could become something interesting for our project. And I think we really like the idea that water could shape space, that 
a space could be one size at one point, but then if water were being filtered through the building, it would become maybe a water wall or a flow of water on the ground that would start to divide spaces into smaller spaces um, and create different experiences for the people occupying those spaces. And you know, this idea that it's dynamically, constantly changing um, the building and the shape of the spaces that are being created, and that is in a way becoming an attractor, becoming an icon, this idea of constant evolution. Rio is actually quite a chaotic city, right? Where there's just so much activity all the time, not just at our site, but like everywhere we went to all the, the Samba school and the beach and favelas. the favelas. And I, I feel like for our site, it was just appropriate to have this place that people could go to for um, a kind of a release, a relief from this urban environment in the city. So we began looking into different sensory experiences um, and divided this, the program into three areas, um, one of them auditory, another ocular, and then tactile. So if you're in the area, let's say the sound area, that you would uh, begin to experience the sound of water, but uh, your visual perception of water would be less obvious, or um, and the range of the sounds of water would vary from a trickle to um, a heavier downpour. So to create that variety of experience within the space, but also in the space offering, offer uh, uh, spaces for one or two people or for large groups. With this idea of icon, I think, um, what we found important or interesting about the icon is this idea that it could be something that's constantly changing uh, and that our building would be something that's constantly changing. People would always want to come to it and be a great attractor just because it would never be the same. And you know, this idea of a space that's constantly evolving is a space that people would always want to come to. It's not the kind of space you just want to come to once and you, know, you don't need to see it again.